Hi everyone. Um, if you're still sheltering in place and looking for a project and are thinking of painting, I am going to share a couple of my DIY painting tips. These, this is just what works for me. So I'll show you my secrets. Um, the first, first thing I'm going to start with is the products that I use. I've tried a lot of different paints. My favorite is Rust-Oleum's chalk paint. It's available in lots of different colors, pre-mixed. It's also available in spray paint. Um, you can find this at Lowe's, Home Depot, Fleet Farm, Lakeland. Um, easy to find, really great price point. Um, my favorite top coat that you put on top of the chalk paint is the matte Rust-Oleum top coat, clear. Protects everything that you do. I start with, by washing whatever I'm gonna paint. You do not, the easy thing about chalk paint is you don't have to strip. So if you're doing um, a dresser or a piece of wood or something, you do not have to strip it. But what I do like to do is to wash it first with TSP. TSP is available in a liquid or powder form and you add water to it and you wear some gloves and it'll degloss whatever you are painting and help the paint to adhere better. Um, I also use a hole filler because sometimes you'll need to fill some holes. So get yourself some hole filler. Um, also, I'll show you some different things you can utilize tape for painting tape. I love, uh, it's a little electric vibrating sander called a mouse or other similar type of units. Easy to use, pretty inexpensive. If you don't have a sander, don't worry. You can use sanding sponges, sanding blocks, sandpaper, up to you. Um, also good to have on hand some mineral spirits for washing your brushes. And um, here's another thing that I use a lot, Rust-Oleum metal paint, and I'll show you what I use that for too. Um, here is a, this is just a small version of a staple gun. Um, nice to have these if you're doing any upholstery work. Don't be scared by that, I'll, I'll tell you all about it. So. Another thing that I like to have on hand is some satin finish polyurethane. And I'll tell you what I use that for as well. Since we are in Fargo, even though I've done a lot of different projects and I'm sheltering in place, I will show you a couple of different projects that I have done that are in my house in Fargo. Starting with this little chair. I picked up this little chair for $5. Um, Washed it with TSP, painted it with gray chalk paint, covered it with the matte top coat, and then I actually just picked up a new um, cushion from Hobby Lobby, and you just screw a cushion, you screw it off with a screwdriver and use a staple gun to cover it, and here's my finished product. Chairs are really fun to do. Here is another project that I did, is this kitchen table. I actually bought this on Facebook garage sale and um, I first painted it white, did a little distressing with sanding, didn't love it, so I redid it and painted this, the base the same color gray that I did this chair in and then I what I decided to do on the top of the table, and the great thing about paint is if you change your mind or it doesn't work out, you just paint over it, no big deal. So I took the paint, or the tape, and to make my stripes, and I, I call, I use a technique called dry brush, where you take the dry brush and just get a little paint on it so it's not too wet and kind of make light strokes. And I think it kind of looked a little bit like wood. So um, 
that's the technique. I used a couple of different colors of grays to make this, um, to get this effect. And then on the top of it, I did two coats of the matte clear top coat. And I did it in a cross hatch pattern, which is just like making X's. Um, Cause you'll, you'll get a little bit of a brush stroke. And I just, I love the way this table turned out. This was kind of a surprise. Um, I just wanted something a little different and I was trying to get it to match my chairs. So there's one, two projects. I would like to show you a project that I did. We moved into a new house a couple months ago and I have this, I have this bedroom set. It's literally about 27 years old. My husband and I were very tired of it, decided to buy a new bedroom set. But then when we went shopping, I, I don't know, I just decided that this, this bedroom set was probably nicer quality than any furniture I had. So I talked him into letting me paint it. A lot of men don't like uh, covering paint or wood with paint. My husband is one of them, but he let me do this dresser. And, um, I did, I did the, the body of the dresser is white. I did two coats of white, sanded it lightly to get that little bit of distressed look, covered it with the matte clear. And on the top, I stripped the top and then put about four coats of that clear polyurethane, sand lightly with a very fine sandpaper in between the coats. Um, one thing I like to remember to do it, which I forgot to do on this dresser, is find your handles. It, and on this dresser, I decided I wanted to replace the handles, but I couldn't find a dress, um, a handle that was the right width. So I, tr I did a little um, something eclectic with the handles and, but it's very easy to drill a different hole and fill holes if you would like to do a different handle or a different look on a dresser. So this is um, one piece that I did and I think it really turned out great by having the top be wood, I thought it looked a little bit more um, appropriate for a man's room as well. So, on my, you can literally paint everything back to my bedroom set. Here is my bed, a sleigh bed. This is definitely circa early 90s. And I painted it and I love it. Love the way it turned out. Um, it was definitely worth, I, I just did the white, sanded it, and clear coat of white, or of the mat on top, really easy. Okay, this is a project that I loved. I initially did this project for my daughter's dorm room when she moved, um, when she first moved into the dorm. She did not have room for it her sophomore year, so I got it back. It is a lane chest, and if I can find the before picture, I'm gonna put it in this video. Um, Otherwise, maybe I'll put it in the comments. I, again, just used the staple gun, did the screws, and covered the top. I got I got some new foam because the initial, the original top was um, really beat up. It was an old Holly Hobby cross-stitch stained thing. The front had handles and, a broke, and broken legs. So I put wheels on the bottom. I picked these up at Menards, and I, Filled the holes. You don't even notice that there's handles. I really didn't think I needed handles, but I have a beautiful lane cedar chest and this whole, I, I bought the cedar chest on um, Facebook garage sale for about $50. Love this. This is a project I am really excited about. So this dresser belonged to my grandma and it was blonde. It's very mid-century modern. I decided to paint the drawers a different color than the top. So these are, again, two Rust-Oleum colors straight out of the can. I just went with two different colors of gray and it turned out beautifully. This is an armoire that actually went with my bedroom set, but my new bedroom was not big enough for it. So, again, a beautiful piece of furniture I decided to paint it and put it in my son's room. And again, by stripping the top and just, this is the natural color of the wood. I did not even stain it. It's just stripped and then a clear coat of um, varnish on the top, a couple of coats. And I think this turned out just 
beautifully. Um, notice you can paint the hinges. I kept the original hardware on this, but if you wanted to change out the hardware, you can use that metal, Rust-Oleum metal paint and also paint the hardware. So I think this turned out really, really great. I would be remiss if I didn't also include the little nightstand that went with this bedroom set. This is also in my son's room. Turned out really terrific. And one thing I wanted to mention is these dressers were in really great shape. But if you have a dresser that's um, got some must or mold or some damage, some, something spilled on the inside, a great product to use is Kills, K-I-L-Z, and you can paint the inside of the drawers and they will not smell anymore. So um, if you're doing an old piece of furniture, don't give up if it's, um, if it's really beat up <laughs> or in bad shape because Kills will cure all. Okay, this is the last piece in my house. Um, I wanted to show it to you. This is not a Rust-Oleum uh, redo. I used an item, a product that I got at, um, I think at Home Depot, and it crackled the paint. So you paint it underneath the yellow, and, it, and then you paint the yellow on top, and it literally crackles the paint. It's a really cool and different finish um, that I, I really wanted to try, and this was the perfect little piece to do it on. I have painted barn doors, kitchen cabinets, desks. Um, if you would like any tips or help, just give me a call.